Hello, welcome, thank you for joining me. Now I'm starting a new series on the devil with a focus on we need to know our enemy so we can identify him when he comes against us with all these tricks and his schemes and so we can overcome as believers of Yahweh. Now when it comes to the devil we need to know who and what we are dealing with. We need to understand and learn who the devil is, his characteristics and what the scriptures teach us as believers on how to fight and overcome the devil. In gaining a better understanding we need to define some terms. So the devil in our Bibles is identified in many different ways and here is most of them on our screen here. That he's identified as the adversary, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, serpent, dragon, Beelzebub, the accuser of the brethren, ruler of demons, the god of his age, the evil one, the roaring lion, ruler of this world, father of lies, prince of the power of the air, Abaddon or Apollyon. Now in gaining a better understanding, we need to define some terms. The devil in the Old Testament is known by the following. And most of us know this term Satan, spelt with a shin, a tau and a final noon. And this is a noun, and it means the opponent, the arch enemy of good, the adversary, and it also means to withstand. And in its verbal form, it means to attack, accuse, to be an adversary or opponent. Now I find it really interesting, the etymology of this word means to retard and hinder. Remember Paul was hindered in 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Here are a couple of examples of this word Satan being used in our Old Testament. And here we have Zechariah chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. And it says, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of Yahweh, and Satan standing at the right hand to oppose him. And Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Yahweh has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? And in another example in Numbers 22 verse 22, Then God's anger was aroused because he went, and the angel of Yahweh took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. And this is the story of Balaam when he's riding on his donkey. And God used an angel and stood before him as an adversary. He was opposing him and standing against him. Now the word Satan is related to another Hebrew word, shoot, and it's spelt with a shin, a wow, and a tet. And it means to go about, to go to and fro, to rove. And here we see this word used in the following verses. In Job 1.7, And Yahweh said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. So here we literally see these, these meanings, Satan and shoot, being used together. And another example of Daniel 12, 4, it says, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Now, what is interesting is just about every occurrence of this phrase to and fro is connected to bad, evil, to being unstable, pretty much Satan. And just about every occurrence of this, this phrase, toing and froing. Now, I really, I really like this. The pictograph of the word Satan is also very revealing. And you see it here on your screen, reading from right to left, a shin, a tet, and a noon. 
Now, as we know, each Hebrew letter has a meaning. So the shin means to destroy or consume. The tet means to surround and a snake. And the noon means seed, heirs and life. So when we combine these meanings of these letters together, it means to surround and destroy the seed and heirs of life. Or the destroyer surrounds the seed of life. So a very powerful meaning in the pictograph meaning of this word. It literally spells out what Satan does. He's the destroyer that surrounds the seed of life. Another word used in the Old Testament, which many of us know, is Lucifer. Now what needs to be understood is Lucifer is actually Latin. It's not a Hebrew word. It's not a Greek word. It's, a, it's Latin. Now the Hebrew word where this word Lucifer is used is Halel. And it means shining one. And there is only one occurrence of this Hebrew word in our scriptures. And Lucifer is only mentioned once in, in the English translation of the Bible. In Greek, this word means morning star, or more so meaning morning. In Christian tradition, Lucifer used, was used as a proper noun for Satan, or the devil, before his fall. And here we see this uh, only use of Lucifer in our Bibles, and it's in Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 15, and it says, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations! For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the throne on the mount of the congregation, on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the high heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So here is this, this only use of this word Lucifer. Now some words that are used of the devil are in the New Testament are as follows. We all probably familiar with this term, the devil in the New Testament is diabolos. And it means slanderer, accuser, devil. One who is prone to slandering and accusing falsely. And in the Thayers, it, uh, it presents and renders the meaning of diabolos this way. The prince of demons or evil spirits. The author of evil separating mankind from God and tempting them to sin, causes mankind to be afflicted with diseases by means of demons. The enemy of Yahweh and the Messiah, men who resemble the devil in mind and will, are said to be of the devil, to be prompted and guided by him. Now, the obelisk is also figuratively applied to a person who by opposing the cause of Yahweh, may be said to act the part of the devil or to side with him. Very interesting. So some examples of this word diabolos in the New Testament are as follows. In Acts 13 verse 10, And said, O full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And another example is in John 6, verse 70. And Yeshua answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And one of you is a devil. Another word that's used in the New Testament is a Greek word, Satanus. And it's pretty much the same as Diabolos. And Satanus and Diabolos are used interchangeably for this being called the devil. And here is this word Satanus used in the following verse, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. And then Yeshua said to him, Away with you, Satan, or Satanus, for it is written, You shall worship Yahweh your God, and him only you shall serve. So this word Satanus in the Greek is used in place of the Hebrew word Satan. And again we see this word used in 1 Timothy 5.15. 
for some have already turned aside after Satan or Satanus. Now, I want to show you a few pictures that I submit are our image of who and what Satan is. It has been given to us, though, mostly through art and medieval art and people's imaginations of what Satan might look like. And it's also seen and portrayed in maybe some of these ways in movies. So again, it's tied to people's imaginations. Same as how we get a picture of who they say Jesus looks like. We get this through art going back centuries. So I'll submit to you that the same way we have the picture of our Messiah that's presented to us through art, the same is for Satan that's presented to us through art, pictures and people's imaginations. So here is the first picture. Traditionally, like this, a being, an angel that portrayed as fallen, and you can see there how this this art depicts that. Another one is more probably a more modern perspective, maybe used in movies and cartoons, and you see this big, bulky monster type being with big, fierce teeth and red eyes and horns. Again, this is somebody's imagination, and a lot of the things that are used in movies are from the imagination. And the last one is a bit more comical and it's presented with a little devil with horns and a, and a pointy tail and a, and a pitchfork. And it's a, more of a cartoon type perspective of it. But this is how the devil and Satan is presented to us in our modern day. That, now I submit that Satan is not like we have been taught or what we have been led to believe he is like. The following passage is held by most as a description of this being before his fall. We know that he, w he was in the Garden of Eden and then he was made to uh, crawl on his belly. So before that, was he crawling on his belly? I'll leave that to you ponder. So here is this verse, this passage of scripture that most hold that explains the devil before his fall. And this is in Ezekiel 28. 11 to 19. And it says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says Yahweh, You are the seal of perfection. You, sorry, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, the topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were, was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. So here we see this going back and forth in this passage. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Verse, eight, uh, verse 16, By the abundance of your trading you become filled with violence within, and you sin. Therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor, I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitudes of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror, and shall be no more forever. So this is a passage that most people believe explains Satan or the devil or this fallen angel before he fell. And we know this verse from Luke chapter 10 verse 18, and he said to them, this is Yeshua speaking, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan fell before the the seven days of creation. 
Yeshua was in the beginning. This is maybe why the earth was without form, void, and darkness covered the deep. Now we have to find some of the terms of the devil and who this being is in the in the Old Testament and in the New. In a statement, we could say that anything that is against the ways of Yahweh and causes us not to worship him and his ways, the ways he wants to be worshipped, keeping his appointed days, the days that he wants to meet with us, is from Satan. Satan is the enemy of Yahweh. And anything to do with Yahweh and his ways. So that's how we could sum up what we've learned so far, that Satan is this opposing being, this opposing angel, whatever you think he is, he causes people to oppose the ways of Yahweh. Well, Father, we thank you that uh, you've revealed who this being is through your word. You've described him and, and we need to understand who this being is and his characteristics and, and what we're up against. Father, ultimately, we, we thank you that you overcame. You gained victory over this being. But we still need to know who he is and, and what his characteristics are so we can identify him and overcome him in our own lives. So, Father, we thank you for your word and your word is true. Well, I hope this, you, you've been blessed by this teaching. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. I hope it's given you a little bit more understanding of who the devil is and, and where he came from. Well, until next time, may Yahweh watch over you. May Yahweh protect you. And may Yahweh bless you and your loved ones. Until next time, Shalom. Thank you for taking the time to watch this teaching. I would like to ask you if you would hit the like button and the subscribe button. This will help us get our teachings out in front of many, many more people. And also to turn on the notification bell so that you will receive an alert for when the latest teaching comes out. I would also like to encourage you that if you are ministered to and blessed by this teaching, that you would share your thoughts and your comments in the section below. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. For more information, please go to www.ancientfoundationbiblefellowship.com. Shalom.